What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Eric, a.k.a. Young God, coming to you live in the in a green dungeon, giving it to you real raw rugged. Um, I am playing a fresh off of an interview, unknowingly, literally until like 10 minutes ago. Somebody who just producing your album, funny enough, I just interviewed like an hour ago. So I, we'll get into that in a minute. But okay. uh, fresh off of an interview and uh, got another interview with somebody who I've actually been wanting to interview since I checked 2020. I've been uh trying to trying to get to you, so we finally got it going on. I'm gonna let him introduce himself, man. Who we got here today? Oh, Quadri. <laughs> uh, oh, so wait, I'm the person that you said that you was trying to interview oh. since. You, oh. you know, you are the person I've been trying to interview since 2020, and I also okay. interviewed the nigga an hour ago that produced your uh, tape. But yes, uh, okay. Yeah. Right. I went, I went to check on Instagram. And I was like, how long have I been following you? And this, I've been following you since 2020. I was like, okay, so that's most when he popped up my radar and I've been uh, tapped in with him. So. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't even know, man. We should have been, been done something. We and yeah. me, me, you know somebody. Um, um, Spencer. Spencer McMullen. Spencer McMullen. Mm, Florida yes. man. Yeah, yeah, so like we, we go back to like middle school days. It's like my best friend. And, oh, uh, okay, that's crazy. And we uh we had like a conversation about you probably around that time to be honest with you like 2020, 2021. Mm-hmm. and um, he was just telling me about you and uh, I don't think he put me on but I think he was telling me a little bit more about you. He was like, yeah man, he got a crazy voice man, you know what I'm saying? And he did like a little he did like a little impersonation. <laughs> Spencer funny bro. Spencer he's a funny. bro. He's like Loki, but in human form. No, yeah, it's just, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Spencer, I, I've always attributed Spencer is legitimately the only white friend that I have. So shout out to Spencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because friend is a is a is a is a heavy term. You know, you don't you don't call everybody your friend, especially a that, white friend. That is a fact, and I don't really associate with that many whiteies. So mm-hmm. <laughs> shout out to shout out to Spencer. But um, shout out to Spencer, <laughs> bro. When I first met Spencer, I thought he was Rex Orange County. That's super duper funny. Because <laughs> he had the ball head or some some saying he had the same thing as Rich Rich, Rich, Rich County head. I was like, oh shit, is that Rich Rich County? And he was like, no, it's Spencer. I was like, okay. Spencer looked like 50 other white people. <laughs> right, I've, I've right. seen at least 50 white men that I'm like, that. I kind of if I close my eyes and squint a little yeah. bit, I look like yeah. a little Spencer. So yeah, he yeah. Does, well, he does have the dot goddamn when he shaves his head, he like a stereotypical white man. So yeah. Yeah, so, that's a part of his charm though. No, for sure. It, it is. And dope, funny, dope artist, huh? too. You know, yeah, like, listen, you know, let's let the people know, you know, he's a very dope artist, you know, they, you know, cracking jokes on. So, no, sure. no, no, Spencer is definitely, like I said, literally, I met him in an art school. Um, And his, like, my, I was in uh, music and he was in uh, visual arts. Mm-hmm. So he's always been like the artsy guy ever since I've met him or whatever. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, salute to Spencer for sure, for sure. Um, um What I was about to say was, Speaking of the person that I interviewed, he's texting me right now. Uh, Overcast. Ah, that's my boy. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's my I boy. I had no clue that uh that um you were on the album. So I was I was like, let me listen to the album before we do the interview again. I'm like, I heard it a bunch of times. I'm like, let me listen to it one more time. And I'm listening to the beat, and I'm like, this beat kind of sound like an Overcast beat. And I went to go check. I'm like, nigga, and I call, I say, nigga, did you produce on his album? He was like, yeah. I was like, nigga, I'm finna interview him in like ten minutes. <laughs> right? Yeah, bro, I, bro. I go straight to the source. I don't do that type beat shit. I don't do that. I go straight to the source. You know, I go find a nigga with the sauce. So, so yeah. something interesting about you is that, like, I feel like you know everybody. Like, you, you, you're a nigga that, like, if even if you just look at this track list, I'm like, this nigga know him. This nigga know him. Uh, you got the song where you talking about Cardo, and it's like yeah. Cardo Overcast got an album coming out in in, mm-hmm. in a few weeks. So I'm like, that's funny. And then mm-hmm. I go get the people that's following you. I'm like, this nigga know this. I'm like, this nigga know everybody. So <laughs> I want to ask you. Are you just like an amazing networker? Are people just find? Are these people finding your music? How do you know all of these people? Man, okay. So back in 2015, I used to come out to LA a lot. Um, courtesy of um this guy, he's legendary A and R. His name is Brock Corson. Um, he worked with Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar a lot. Worked with Travis Scott a lot. So. He would fly me out like from 2015 or 2019. Like he would like fly me out for like two months, three months, sometimes, you know, like four or five months. So I'm meeting all these people. Like most of the people, well, like the first group of people I met were his friends. Like, you know, the um Tremaine Emery's. Um, um, I met Steve Lacey from like we was having like a shrimp 
you know, like a, you know, like a, a seafood boil. And, you know, Steve came through, Joey Badass came through, like, almost half of the ASAP mob came. So, so it's like, you know, like I would be around. Um, One of the guys who used to be around a lot, his name is Hip Hop. Um, He was one of the, a and, like the first A&R at like Rockefeller Records. So yeah. it's like, I would wake up in the morning and like he would be sitting at the table, you know, like drinking coffee. So that's the kind of realm I was thrown into. Mind you, I'm from Baton Rouge, bro. Like there's no music industry there. There's no like, we, we've had a good amount of successful hip hop artists, but as far as like trying to get signed or trying to be in any type of national media, you got to go outside of Baton Rouge to experience that. So, you know, I'm just, mind just, you know, head turning at 360. So throughout those years, yeah, man, like I met a lot of people, you know, Brandon Jinx popped through the studio doing something for like, um, doing an interview on Brock for like Complex. Me and him like struck up on a core, like um, who else? A guy named Tao Hum who helped me um, put the album together. Um, I... Well, actually, I met him through my friend Cody. Cody Versius used to be my manager. He manages 100 gigs now. That's how I got Dylan Brady on Malik Grove. So it's like, it's, it's, I can't even attribute it to me being a great quote unquote marketer. I'm just, I'm just around the right people. And to be honest, bro, I'm just a solid dude. And like, you know, my word is my bond and I treat people how I want to be treated. So, that's how, like, because, you know, it sticks, like, you know, like, the people that I know that really, like, you know, my friends, I can call them, you know, you, I wouldn't say, like, everyday talking friends, but if I needed a favor and they could do it, all I got to do is text and all I got to do is call and it's vice versa. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think that's kind of the main reason where it's like, you could see, like, oh, what the fuck, 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 you know, it's just, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm passionate about what I do as well. So, you know, people like pick up on that, you know. Yeah. Like from watching interviews that you've done and talking to you for, I don't know, like five minutes, mm-hmm. you're a very likable guy. So I get why just in the sense where even before they hear, they, even before they hear your music, mm-hmm. people probably like, it's like, a, it's like a cool nigga right here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if somebody seems cool, then you find out they do something. You're like, oh, I really want to hear it. Versus you meet somebody who's like an asshole. Mm-hmm. And I ain't trying to hear what that nigga got going on. You know what exactly. I'm saying? You don't even I, care. Like, I don't care what you got going on. Exactly. Yeah, so the fact that you have such a likable personality, I can already imagine that people who just meet you just on some human interaction type stuff find out later, oh, he does music? Oh, man, I love that guy. Let me hear his music. You know what I'm saying? Or this guy mm-hmm. seems cool. So I feel like your charm definitely is something that will like resonate for forever you know what i'm saying so i think that's a very cool thing like you said like uh tail hom i know him through spencer i mean i don't know him but like i know of him through spencer that's how i met spencer through tail really i was yeah. i thought that i probably thought that like that was probably how y'all met um but no he's and, really good yeah and that's why i thought he was rex orange county <laughs> because tail was bringing him around oh you know you know bringing around Rex County. oh spencer okay cool I, you know you know <laughs> that's hilarious but uh no nah, he's hard though like he's a really um he's really good at at producing and making music from uh yeah, everything. yeah he's prodigious if that word applies to him mm-hmm. yeah he's just good just um you know i can't even explain it. he's just good no he is and i guess kind of going back i feel like uh this is something that i talk about all the time and i highly doubt anybody that's interviewed you ever really got into this but you're from Baton Rouge, right? Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, I've met some. I've heard that word pronounced two ways. And I just, I don't know if it's Baton Rouge or Baton Rouge. Or I didn't. Snoop Dogg says Baton Baton Rouge. Rogue. <laughs> um, natives call it Baton Rouge. The correct pronunciation is Baton Rouge. Ah. So it's you know it just depends on who you are and where you're from. Okay, okay. So going back to that. In uh, and um, what do you call it? In Jackson, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, so Jack- okay. So Jacksonville is when I mean around like 2005, 2007 ish, 2009, mm-hmm. never like it, it kind of ended. You would have thought Boosie was from Jacksonville, 
the way that niggas love Boosie and Jacksonville, you would have thought this nigga was from here. So speaking of somebody from that area, when he before he got out of jail, I mean before he went to jail, excuse me, what was like the relationship with like Baton Rouge and Boosie? Like, was he just like the man out there? Yeah, like you would see him out, like, you know, in his different cars. Like he was, he was, he was, I don't want to say urban legend. Because that kind of makes it to the sense like, you know, he didn't exist. So like an urban legend is some shit you know on you. But no, he was like legend. Like um, Bro, people Oh shit, man. I saw Boosie in his red red charge. Oh shit, I saw him in the green charge. I saw you know, I, I saw Boosie. Like like it, it you know, it's hard to explain because Ben Rouge only has two hundred and twenty five thousand people. So for us to get a rap star, it you know, first of all, he's from the south side of Denver, so it's like he's from a part of town that's kind of historical. Um, so he's kind of like the perfect encapsulation of what it is. Like he's 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 a spokesperson. He's to represent what you know. He's he's grown in his career to the point where he's more of like a black cultural thing, but in his early years, like, yeah, he was, yeah. I don't even want to compare it to how, like, young boys treating the city, but, like, Boosie, it was, you couldn't find anybody, especially our age, like, kids who 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 had anything bad to say about Boosie, like, love the music, you love the way he dressed, you love the cars that he you know, rode in, like, you love, Boosie, for us, I mean, I would say more influential than Wayne mm -hmm. at certain things. Like, you know, because to be honest, that 2005 to 2007 time frame is Boosie, T.I. Wayne. Those are kind of the, you know, the vanguards of that era. So, yeah, Boosie was right there, bro. Like, and then Zoom, actually, I was having a conversation with Brandon Jinx, and, like, he was telling me about how when he was growing up, his local rap stars were, like, not, you know, the rap stars, you know, as, you know, like DMX and Jay Z, those are his local rappers. And I was telling him, yeah, it was the same thing for me growing up too. My local rapper was on BET, like you know. So it's just speaking towards how far the South progressed in that time too, because it's like, yo, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, not Houston, not New Orleans, not Miami. The the guy that I could see any given day or like somebody from his camp and any given day that really put a battery in my bag. Like, like I, I didn't grow up thinking being a rapper was like a far fish thing. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a reasonable occupation to, you know, have it's, you know, in reach just from, you know, growing up in that era. It's like, it's so like I interviewed Chuck strangers from New York and mm -hmm. I was telling him about the whole, like how Boosie was like, I'm like, bro, niggas was looking at Boosie like Tupac down here, bro. Like he was untouchable. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people from like New York and like they can't they can't fathom that because that wasn't the reality. Like he was not mm -hmm. that New York. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. wasn't what he was down here. And like I know it was crazier in Baton Rouge, but like in here, like bro, like nigga, I done talked to like niggas in their 30s that were like, bro, I ain't had no daddy, bro. Boosie was like my father figure growing up just listening to the music. Like, niggas really connected emotionally to Boosie. And then, niggas, I don't even want to forget the, the other legend. Nigga, then, you got Webby coming right along with him. You know what I'm saying? And the interesting thing about Boosie and Webby is that you know, niggas always talk about like niggas from the South can't rap. Them niggas can rap. Like, them niggas was rapping on them songs. Bro, they're like are equivalent to Ghostface and Raekwon. Like that's 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 the quit. You know, that's a good that's a good comparison. I like that comparison in the sense of like what Ghost and Ray are for New York. They're the quintessential New York nigga. Like it, it, you know, a lot of shit comes like from their tree. The same with Boosie and Webby. They're the quintessential Baton Rouge, and also they're really the spokesperson for that mid Southern town. Not, mm -hmm. not, not the big ones like like New Orleans and Houston, Atlanta, Miami. They're the spokesperson for Jackson, Mississippi, Jacksonville, Florida, Orlando. Um, what's another one around there? Uh, Little Rock. 
um, Birmingham. They they had that shit sold up, so it's like you know, you, you know they they made their mark. I always go back to them, um, like let's take Boosie for example. I always say like I feel like a lot of street rap or street rappers are kind of one toned versus even somebody like Boosie because a Boosie will have like a white me down or like a party mm-hmm. song. He'll have a song like. Like in uh, set it off where it got you ready to fight a nigga, but then they have like an introspective song. You know what I'm saying? He have a song talking about his life. He'll have uh, baby mama, baby mama. Bro, I was just about to mention, bro, to even write a song like that, the level of vulnerability that you have to have to write a song, tell, <laughs> explain it to the mother of your child how her actions make you feel insecure. Like just, 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 just think about this. You you wouldn't get that from a from the fucking most sensitive sixties rock star. You see what I'm saying? Like that level of vulnerability is almost unprecedented in, in music, especially from a male artist. And we have to talk about what type of art. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, bro. Because people get boosty as flowers on like some street shit or like some some like gangster shit, but him as a rapper and as an artist is very understated and people kind of say it on some ironic shit oh like oh yeah you know like i like boosie like no bro he's probably of his generation for sure top 15 like you know and he came out in like a heavy class so you know hey i i I beat this horse to death on this channel but if anybody doesn't believe me just go listen to his debut album badass go listen to that album and tell me that is not a great major label debut album and come back to me you know so and and way we came back with savage like bro these these guys had it in a chokehold and people were well you know it was still kind of regional too because you know just like you know like how jada kiss is like revered i fuck with jada kiss and it's some people that i know Specifically, it's this rapper from Baton Rouge called like Mr. Kane, and like he says on his song, you know, like my favorite rapper was Jada Kiss, but he don't hit like Boosie hit down here. You see what I'm saying? So like I can imagine how a Chuck Strangers would be like, oh, you know, nah, you know, like we fuck with Jada Kiss and you know, like Dipset and shit like that. So I get it. Ghostface one of my favorite rappers of all time. I did not grow up hearing Ghostface in Jacksonville. Like, and went niggas saying, "Hey, bro, you want to go listen to Supreme clientele?" Like, niggas yeah. saying that, you know. What I'm saying? So, uh, same thing with JD because, like you said, like he is. It's like a very region. It's not well. I wouldn't say more so regional. It's just like when you get to the South, bro. There's certain stuff you're not going to hear. Like mm-hmm. that was, like, bro. I w- I wish I was old enough to be around when Jay Z was big, like in like the '90s, early 2000s. So mm-hmm. I really wonder. Were niggas like in Atlanta, Jacksonville, Baton Rouge, were niggas spinning Jay Z like that? Like, I really do wonder that. I, I mean, I can't speak to it, but you know, we can just kind of look back in context and just how like media was dispersed. Um, everybody had to watch MTV at a certain, you know, like everybody watched like 106 and Park. So Jay Z and them was on that. So I, I can't imagine them not playing um hard not life or yeah. like just you know j- just his hits so you know y- y- you know like jay-z had a presence and jay-z was like you know you know people will play jay-z to themselves in a the south yeah. they wouldn't play it riding around their car trying to pre- you know like you know like at a car show in houston like they're not playing it they're they might they might play a screw rendition of some jay-z or like some some jay-z they they fuck with but yeah. they not just playing front to back Jay Z not like, like that like that's not happening. So yeah, like you know, like and then too, bro, it's perspective. The things Boosie is talking about in the South, you can walk outside your door and see. What mm-hmm. Jay Z is talking about, you have to go to that place to see that. Like you have to go to Marcy Projects to understand what he's talking about. So you know, the guy around the corner rapping your everyday life, or the guy, yeah. 2,000 miles away, which one are you going to pick? So, no, I mean, you, you're you really going to re- resonate with what's closer to you, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Versus something that's 1,000 miles away, like you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we get off of Louisiana, I do want to put you onto a rapper that you might not be onto. I do not know if he's from Baton Rouge or, or uh, New Orleans. Either one. He's from either one of the two. 
But it's a guy named Jamil Naeem X. Have you heard of him? No, I haven't. And it's crazy. I thought that you that like you were gonna say a name. Like I knew. I was like, yeah, shit, I don't know him. Jamil Naeem X. Jamil Naeem X is one of the best like underrated rappers out. He is, and he produces as well. He is a weapon. A weapon. He's talking a, a weapon. weapon. That's the only way I can, because like not only is his beats crazy, he can rap his ass off, and like so he, he sounds like so a nigga. How you know? Hmm? He he sounds like it. Did he say no, no, it? No, 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 no. He is a nigga from Louisiana, but I'm just saying, like, he's a nigga you could tell okay. when he talk. He's from Louisiana. That's what I'm saying. So he's a Louisiana nigga that's rapping his ass off. He is. I've interviewed this nigga twice. He's a okay. really, really, really good rapper. I will send you some stuff. Yeah, after, yeah please. Because uh, I would imagine niggas probably don't know how to spell his name, but it is uh, J A M E E L. And uh, if you just type in X after that, I'm pretty sure it'll pop up. But okay. yes, Bill Naeem X is a. Uh, Damn. So you didn't ask him what part of Louisiana he was from? I have, but I just don't remember. Like I I, I just know the nigga from Louisiana, but I I don't know which where he's from. But okay. uh yeah, if 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 anybody wants a how about this? If anybody wants a good album to introduce yourself to him, I would say go listen to uh go listen to He Died Trying. Okay. All right. All right. Trying. Or Fidel's favorite color too. Either one of those you can't go wrong with. So Okay. 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 Max. We'll we'll talk about Brett a little bit later, but uh, yeah. back back to you because um, I do, I do regard y'all too as like some of the best. Like I feel like underrated rappers from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. People don't really uh talk about as enough as I feel because this this album that you just put out, this is like, this is too good not to be like everywhere like this hey, this should be on everybody like list it should be everybody it should be all on a playlist zane low should be meat riding you or something right now like bro, <laughs> this should be everywhere so i just want to say that man this is a really really good body of work thank you bro i very i i you know like i really appreciate that you know because it's 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 truly like a labor of love like it's, it's truly something i put my heart into and you know this is the first project i can wholeheartedly say I did it my way and I got the space and the creativity to try shit. So I'm very proud that you feel that way. Cause it's like, it, it, it confirms everything I was thinking to me, you know, like, you know, like I was right. So, you know how, like some listen to this album, I'm like, man, that's a good album. Like, every song good, every song good. I'm like, that. this is another song, another song good, another good song, another good song. And then there was a moment where I said, wait, can I read you the bars of what was the wait? He said, Time never waits for no man. Peep the slow hand. Lines is all. We really know lambs. Get money and split it up with the bro hands. When you go outside, don't let the dough slam. Do you know why that made me go wait? Yeah, I, I, I know exactly why. I am a big crit stan. And mm -hmm. so am to, I. Hear, to hear like, Cause that's not like a how do you put it? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, yeah, you know yeah, that's, yeah. That, that wasn't country shit or whatever. Like exactly. that was like a, you gotta really listen to that mixtape to even know that song. So mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, wait. And then I had to Google it. I was like, wait, maybe I'm um not knowledgeable, and maybe Crit was quoting like an older rapper. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, no, this nigga was just quoting Crit. I'm like, that's yeah. so fire. So that made me an even bigger fan of this album because I love Crit, and you put spotlight on a Crit song that's like a. Mm -hmm. underrated song so i just want to talk about that what what went into the decision of saying i'm gonna quote lines and lambs because okay the whole concept of the song is like you know it's this commentary or this conversation i'm having with a friend that you know is having a tumultuous time back home and i'm out in cali and you know things of that nature and like at the end of the song the character well it's me rapping but the character that's my friend says um, only got this gun to protect us. I oh, fuck. I'm mangling my own lyrics, but the gist of it was, I only did those things, or I only got that weapon just for us to be safe in these streets that we out here, you know, running. And going back to the crit, time never waits for no man. Peep the slow hand. Lines is all we really know. Lambs get money, split it up with my bro ham. That's first of all. The time period I'm talking about, that's the song that was out. That's the album that, like, we was playing. 
So it's so you know, like in a way, it's a way to to bring me back to that era in that time. Secondly, it's also a complimentary, you know, commentary too. Like, you know, time to waste for no man, peep the slow hand. Lines is all we really know. Lambs kind of talking about this environment that me and my friend find ourselves in. So, in you know, it's you know, like it works doubly, and and I chose to use it because it was the perfect kind of. It just worked. You know, it just worked. It's super interesting because we're talking about Crit. We're talking about Boosie Webby. We're talking about you. And mm. I mean, I guess Crit kind of out of it, but you were listening to him at that time. I feel like when I think of like a Baton Rouge rapper or like the sound of Louisiana music, I think of it being like a certain way. And you're talking about the environment that you were in and the lines just straight, you know, animal savages around mm. you at that time. You have a different sound from like most stereotypical like Louisiana rappers. Was that inspired by your environment? Was that inspired by what you was listening to? Like, how did you think you crafted the sound of what we hear today? To be honest, man, that's how any beat I choose, it either sounds like home or makes me think of a memory from home or it makes me or, or invokes some type of emotion. Ghost of Brandywine, for example, that sounds like you know, that sounds like Friday night, Baton Rouge, like 10 p.m. Mm. So it, it might not be the traditional way that that artists from the city, the, you know, the sound palette that artists from the city have used, but it's, you know, that's, it's just how I see Baton Rouge. Like that sound that I came up with, you know, because you're not the first person to say that, and, you know, like, and it's kind of a, um, a sticking out point in my music. Cause like, oh wait, he from Baton Rouge. Like, ain't nobody from Baton Rouge ever sounded like this. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's just how I see the city, or just how the city makes me feel. Like, you know, to be honest, man, sometimes Baton Rouge sound like some Wu Tang shit. Like, mm-hmm. sometimes it feel like some Dilla shit. Sometimes it feel like some Knife Wonder shit. And you know, like, I just want to speak more to that. You know, sometimes it feel like some Mike Will Made shit. You see what I'm saying? It, you know, it feels a lot more varied than we've been led to believe those are brandy wine is so hard just because like we were talking about spencer like doing your voice but like your voice is like so unique and like the way that it sounds on that beat with that that ride with me Mm -hmm. come with me come and see where i'm from like the way you sound on that is so perfect the beat is perfect uh goes to brandy wine that's super duper firing you say you would you would liken that to like 10 p.m in baton rouge Mm-hmm, that's what mm-hmm. I like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just you know, just post it up outside the stove, like you know, we drinking, talking, smoking, talking shit, and that song is playing. What would you say, like, um, would you say like every time you kind of say like when you hear beat, like sometimes it just sounds like home. Would you say every every song or every beat that you hear, are you making? How do I put this? So like for example, when I hear a song. It don't even have to be video out, but like I'll make a video in my head. So if I'm I'm listening to song, I'm like, damn, I don't already direct this full video in my head. When you hear mm-hmm. beat, do you get that, or do you kind of get more visual when you put lyrics to the beat? Um, okay, so for that Overcast joint, for example, when he yeah. played me that beat, I didn't hear what I wrote to it when he first played it, but. Once I got home and like listened to it, it made me think about my time in California. Mm-hmm. So I think it's the second option. It's like once I start writing it, like once I start getting the second or third bars, you know, like I start to see like, okay, this is what this is gonna be. But you know, just from like the beat brings out feelings. Yeah. And that beat kind of made me feel nostalgic. Mm-hmm. So I so I start writing about those times, like, yo, you know, I'm with Cardo. So, yeah, that's 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 really the gist of it. Yeah, it's it's instrumental feeling words. Gotcha, gotcha, you gotcha. You know, that's and kind of the process. Words. That's interesting. So, like, do you um, do you ever? Because like, this is a psychopath. I don't know how niggas do this. I know niggas that say like they'll write us, they'll write a full song out and then find a beat to put on the do you do that at all because i mean that's not kind of backwards from your process you're talking about sometimes sometimes because to me like that's just more like on some exercise shit whereas like i might i might write some shit to no beat and i just you know i just tweak the flow depending on you know i could put it on any beat you know i just gotta tweak the flow a little bit so yeah that's you know i you know like i 
you know, I do that from time to time, but you know, I, I haven't done it in a while. That's not your go-to process to make a song. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. Cause if I write some without a beat, it's gonna be bugged out. Like it's just gonna be some other shit. Like it's gonna be like it's gonna sound like I was like rapping on acid. <laughs> just the, you know, internal rhyme schemes and like, you know, like the shit I'm talking about. Yeah, like it's just gonna be weird. How often do you write for that almost like a lyrical exhibition, just like crazy? You know, how often does that happen? Um, I just had to do it because I'm going on on the radar soon so i had to do it for that but i mean when i feel like niggas playing with me or some shit like when i feel like you know niggas you know like acting like i ain't one of the best like when when dochi dropped her album and mm -hmm. i was like oh okay y'all you know y'all talking some good shit about this hold on man let me you know he put my pen to pay right quick man you know just to show myself because i you know i ain't gonna release it but just to show my life shit nigga, i'm tight too man what they talking about you know, you... Yeah. No, no, no. Keep going. Oh yeah, yeah. It's some ego shit. Purely ego. Purely MC. Purely blood sport shit. Well, so I was gonna ask. I was gonna say, like, are you like competitive? Just in general, not even just by rap, but just are you a competitive human? Not in general, but with like MCing, like rapping that art form, like I'm extremely like it's so crazy. That's the only thing in my life I'm super competitive about. Like I don't give a fuck about winning in checkers or chess or a basketball game. Like, you know, I'm just playing. But for it's MC shit, like, like, nah, like, you know, I'm gonna make it known. Like yeah. Yeah. it's super interesting when I hear stories about like competitors. Like I'll hear a story about like um for example, like Michael Jordan. Like mm -hmm. a nigga like Michael Jordan like absolutely just hates losing. Or someone like Tom Brady just hates losing. Like, but anything, like like they'll say like Tom Brady would feel like connect four and you keep beating him. Like that mm -hmm. nigga like ready to break the board. Like he just loses his mind, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's it's interesting to hear people who can like disassociate that with their like their like career. Cause like you mm -hmm. you're competitive about like your career, but other other things, it's not really like that serious to you. So it's interesting that you could be motivated and make amazing music and not have to be like competitive all around you know i mean i would like to win and connect four let's not get it twisted like i'm playing to win you know like in uno and shit i'm playing to win but it's like i'm not you know that's not the end of the world we'll play again like i mean <laughs> well wait let me take that back we'll play to our win so maybe that is that you know i'm just you know i don't you know <laughs> we for sure gonna play <laughs> play till i win we for sure gonna play till i win I was like, maybe you are a little bit competitive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, like, I'm going to get my get back. Like, I'm going to get, but, 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 like, we ain't about to stay up all night playing yeah. this shit. No, like, no. Once I get, once I get my get back, I'm cool. Like, I'm, no, no, I'm, no, for sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah. When, did, when did you know, like, um, did, did you have a moment where you was like, you know what? I actually take rap serious than, like, most other things. Um, when I would rap with my friends, mm -hmm. like, and then, like, I would see, like, oh, they just playing around. And, like, it it got to the point where they we stopped doing freestyle sessions. Mm -hmm. Like, because it got to the point, like, oh, core, like, you know how, like, when you playing, pick up with your friends, like, one of your friends, like, like a D1 prospect, and you, like, dunking and shit and, like, doing all type of shit. And it's not fun no more. Like, you know, like, like we fucking up and, you know, trying to play, you know, play basketball. Nigga, you doing plays and shit and... <laughs> Going between your legs and like, uh, fuck it. That's how I was with me and my friends rap. Cause you know, like we'll get high and start rapping. Then it got to the point like, it'll just me be rapping. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like we'll get high, just like we'll just like listen to me rap. So like that's kind of how I went. Like, you know? all right, Nick, we done. You still going? You know, yeah, where where or 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 like they'll say something and then I'll say something. It's like. Eh. Like, bro, like, you have to go that hard. Like, you know, just bullshit. Like, you have to do internal rhyme schemes and shit. That's like, so funny. Did you, so, was there a point? Yeah, when like, this. That's when I kind of knew, like, okay, I'm not, you know, I might be gifted at this shit. I would say, was there ever a point, though, within that where you thought, like, these are my friends? Maybe they're just hyping me up because they're my friends? Or did you know, like, it's different? Nah, they don't, they, yeah, they don't hype. Like, I mean, you know, those are my type of friends, like, like nigga, like if you ugly, like we gonna tell you ugly, like we ain't about to hype you up, like we not like we gonna tell you the truth. So like you know, you know what reality is. So it's like that was always the reality. Oh yeah, you know, Quad gonna be the best rapper alive. Like it, you know, like it got to the point where they got nonchalant about it. Like <laughs> oh yeah, Quad. I mean yeah, I mean Quad gonna make millions of dollars off rapping. Like, <laughs> like it was. 
right. it it got to that fucking point, and it's like now nah, it's like you know oh you ain't blew up yet though I mean you know it's gonna happen you know you know nigga you fuck like yeah, it's gonna happen <laughs> like you know because it's been like ten years like you know like I've been doing this for like ten years like usually friends will be like damn nigga like. You know, yeah. you gonna blow up like you know, like you know, like you dope, you know, like are you the problem? Like no, they just like oh mm, yeah, yeah, come on, you know, you'll figure your way out eventually. <laughs> and I also like you've been ten years or so into it. Where like if you had to do like a self assessment, where do you see yourself at? Like, are you where you thought you would be? Do you want? Do you thought you'd be further? Like, where do you self assess right now? I mean, I guess I would want to be further because you said I'm the most like underrated of like one of the underrated. Yeah. So, yeah, like I would. Yeah, I would definitely love for more people to know who I am. But as far as like, you know, like it's a crazy thing, too, because like just like you said, like it seems like I know everybody that it. I'm rich in relationships. Mm. I'm rich in like that. Like I'm not the most famous person, but. I can get in touch with the most famous person. Yeah. Like, you know, like I can, you know, if I really wanted to, I can get in touch with Kendrick Lamar right now. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's like, okay, which is more powerful? Being a person that people tugging at you like 24 seven or being a person where it's like, you kind of feel like you're the power behind the throne. It's like, you can make moves that might, might seem a little too big for your britches. Yeah. So, you know, I guess, you know, either or. Because to be honest, if, like, my 17-year-old self, I feel he'll be proud and, like, what I got to do and the things I got to accomplish. But I would have to explain to him the journey to be, you know, kind of be, you know, because he'll have some questions like, damn, nigga, like, why you not famous yet? Where your, where your millions? So, you know, I had to, you know, explain to him, like, you know, this happened and, and, then, and then, you know, he'll be like, oh, Oh, all right. Okay. Makes sense. Like you say, you're you're definitely rich in relationships because it was like saying like you know everybody. It's not saying like it's a shot, like damn, how do you think you know all these people? He ain't nobody. But it's just mm-hmm. more so like you have like four thousand this is such a silly uh barometer to go off of. You got like four thousand followers on Instagram. And it's like nigga, it's niggas with twenty thousand followers that don't know the people that you know. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's really important because I feel like this industry is definitely an industry where it's like it's who you know. And if mm-hmm. you know the right people, because you just brought up Kendrick, I wouldn't be surprised if next Kendrick album, this nigga throw you on a verse, you know what I'm saying? Give you a feature or whatever. And it's all about really who you know. So you can have all of these followers or whatever, but if you don't know this one nigga that could change your life, I don't mm-hmm. really matter. you know what I'm saying? So I do think that um that is like a very fascinating thing that you have gotten yourself to the point where it's like, like I was looking at the people who follow you. I'm like, nigga, who don't follow this nigga? I'm like, nigga, nigga, everybody know this nigga, man. Yeah, yeah, who, yeah, like anybody who's anybody are doing something interesting. Either I know about them or they know about me. So that's a good position to be in, bro. So you know, I'm I'm supreme. I'm supremely grateful for that. So yeah, like you'll never catch me. Oh man, I'm supposed to blow it up. Oh, why ain't famous? Somebody ain't doing something for me. Oh, it's your fault. Like, oh, man. you know, at the end of the day, this is my dream, and. You know, I'm down to do it solo. And, you know, anybody that comes through and help comes through to help, I'm extremely grateful and appreciate appreciative. And I try to extend that energy to them as well. Like, you know, like if somebody do me a favor, I'll be damned if they ask me something that's within my realm of power to do and I won't do it. So that's real. That's real. I um I've been thinking which which song on the album, some I might mix up a bunch of songs. Which one goes which one where you do the uh Still tipping on four foes. Devontae 2003. Okay, I thought it was Devontae 2003. Really good song. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Thank you, bro. Till I knew what that meant. Like, the way, like, bro, your voice is so fucking fire, dog. Like, mm-hmm. you don't sound like nobody. I think, that, and that's, that was like a thing with Boosie where I feel like Boosie voice could either turn you completely off, like, I do not want to hear this, or like, mm-hmm. damn, he has a unique voice, similar to you, where it's like, you had to kind of have like a higher pitch voice when you rap, but it's so unique. And I would compare it to low key, Somebody like Buddy, which is funny enough, is on his album. He has like a very unique voice that I don't really mm-hmm. see nobody. And to hear y'all on the same song together, I'm like, that's cool because they have like unique sounds or whatnot, which I also think that song came out really well. It's uh, really mm-hmm. good. So, yeah. But yeah, Buddy was the perfect person to be on that song because he's he he's one of the characters, like how I want to talk about a Michael 
who's the rule? How you know, like how I'm gonna talk about a car though? I could have did a third verse with Buddy on it. You know, mm. you know, but you know, Buddy put me on, you know, to my favorite weed um person. So it's like, you know, and it's you know, like it was so dope for that to come full circle with him being on this album that fingers crossed might be the biggest of my career and take me to a place that, you know, I deserve to be at, you know, like from all my hard, hard work and talent. I think another moment where I was like, nigga, is that who I think it is? I'm listening to the intro. And at the very end of the intro, I said to myself, like, damn, this kind of sound like, uh, it's like it just kind of broke into a, a Black Odyssey song. And then I went to go check and I'm, it's Black Odyssey on her face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> like this, nigga. Like, of course, that's what it is, nigga. Hey, quid pro quo. With my music, if that if you think that's who it is, that's who it is. <laughs> like, I, bro, just like I said, I go to the source. I'm not doing no, I'm not doing no impersonating, get nobody that sound like that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not me, not I. Nigga, if it sound like Mad Lib, it's, it's Mad Lib. Yeah, it's Mad Lib. <laughs> So, very very good intro though because like you, you just came out the gate rapping you know what i'm saying just rapping like you know i'm like okay this is a nigga that's you was rapping like you was like on a mission on that intro like hey i'm let me set the tone for what the rest of this album is gonna be was that the was that the kind of the out the mission for that yeah bro you hit it right nail on top of the head because with me my albums i kind of put the rapping to the backseat a little bit just just in the service of sequence and the emotions I'm trying to convey and what I'm trying to do with this project. But with this album, I just wanted to get that out the way. Let's just let's just kill all discussion. Nah, this guy can rap. Okay. Let's listen to the rest of the album. You know, and that's you know kind of why I did it like that. Like, okay, he can rap. Then it switches to like this jazzy neo soul type of vibe and it's like okay okay he's he also has a sense of mu musicality as well and i feel when the listener realized that they'll be excited because it's like oh shit we ain't really had this in a long time not not saying a long time but the last guy who got it right you know he's you know he's famous and one of the best rappers ever i feel like you can hear the musicality if you're if you're not deaf. You can hear the musicality on "They Think We Ghetto." To be honest, because mm. like, I feel like that project has a lot of things where I'm like, "Damn, he's switching up. He's doing a lot of stuff." Like, mm. uh, what is it? That new sentence song with um the song with a uh, black party. Black party's on that song. Mm. Um, that's that's like that's like one of my favorite songs by you. I love. Oh, it. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that song as well. Why? Yeah. What? Why? Why do you like that song so much? Because obviously making it, but yeah, you know. it's blood simple. Um. You know, I'm actually that song is probably the precursor to what I was doing on Ask a Magnolia, where I'm like kind of describing this scene mm -hmm. and, um, and you know, and kind of putting the listener right there, just kind of like you can smell what I'm talking about. So that's, you know, that's why it kind of led to everything else. Like you said, that, that is a song that, yeah. um, can, can be, he's not be oh. Oh. oh, oh, my bad, bro, go ahead. No, no, you're good. No, that 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 is that does sound like a song that could have been on this album. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it sounded like it, it fit. And like, was that a? I guess making this album, did you realize like? Let me take that back. When making that song, did you realize like, huh, I want to make an album kind of in this direction, or was that just that kind of coincidence? Mm -hmm. I I think I wanted to make something very visual, like a movie. That yeah. that's that's what it was. That scent was like, you know, just the best way I can describe a scene. And I was like, okay, what if I did this throughout a whole album? Or like, what if I rap from somebody else's perspective, like throughout the whole song? So yeah, like that's that kind of gets you to Ghost of Brandywine and Devontae two thousand three, like that scent. Well, the new me that scent thing. No, no, that like I said, that I could now that you say that, that does sound like a precursor too. For what was to come in the future mm -hmm. and like, just throughout this entire album i like the fact that one you're rapping i love just to hear somebody rap i feel like you get to the point sometimes where you hear a lot of songs where you kind of lower your standards because it's like mm -hmm. okay, this is good for what it is you know mm -hmm. but just make a rap and be like this is just good because it's good 
Shout out to you for that. I do appreciate that a lot. And uh, yeah, just the sounds, like the different type. Because like you said, you got so many different types of producers because Overcast don't sound nothing like what Black Odyssey does. And Black Odyssey don't sound nothing like what T.O. Hom may do or mm -hmm. like uh, just everybody that you put together on this album. So I really do appreciate the rapping and just the different sounds that you played with on this album. Mm -hmm. To be honest, the producers are just collections of artists, I, you know, on the Trail James worked on um, The Forever Story. Overcast worked with Mavi, you know, um, extensively. Black Odyssey is his own thing. Teo, you know, who's a friend of mine, but he also did um, where I'm from for Ray Lene. So mm -hmm. all these producers are just from music that I like, you know, and I think that's another reason why it comes across so good because, you know, like these are guys who do make me the music that I like. Yeah. So, you know, I was proud to have them on there. You know, contribute. Oh, Archie Ball Slim, who made Grease Poppin' off of records. I've been a big off of records fan. So, yeah, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why this album kind of feels very lived in and feels better than average. You yeah. Know? You really know? good album, bro. Like I said, this is one of one of the best rap projects of the year. I feel like it's like a really good project, man. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. And and yeah, man, um, we're trying to get it on everybody's list. We're trying to, you know, get the word, you know, get the word out on it. Um, cause I feel the same. I feel I've, it's, it's, I don't want to say this and seem like what I'm doing is the way to do hip hop, but it's, 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 it's hip hop music at its core. What makes hip hop music great. That's what makes this album great. It's somebody telling a story that only they could tell and yeah. doing it in a, doing it in a fly and unique way. So I feel like this one deserves to be revered because we're at the 52nd year of the genre now, 51st, I'm not sure. And just think about when somebody gets 52. They're kind of settling into who they are and what makes them them. And they're not trying to cross over or, you know, um, you know, fuck money like money is cool but it's i'm not gonna take it no amount of money can make me not love who i am mm. so i think when a person gets to that age that's the type of feeling that they get and with hip-hop getting to that age i think me making this album and making it how it is i think that's kind of reflective you know because only the genre can produce something like this right now and it's kind of kind of flux state of like where is hip hop going? What is hip hop? Who you know, where does it deserve to be in the socio economic arena? Like, is it something that we use to sell chocolate and popcorn or is it a voice for the people? You know, these these are these are heavy questions that we have to get answered fast. If, you know, if we want to see this thing that we love I don't want to say survive because, you know, you know, you know, black kids making music, that's always going to be there. But this, you know, just just for this culture to, you know, just something to pass down to our kids, you know, something, you know, like we were dope. This is who you made, you know, and show it to them, you know, just like our, how our parents did, you know, with us. So that's all I hope from it. I will say, like for the past few years. I guess more so like on a mainstream level, we're just generally talking. Boy, oh boy, I don't want to sound like the pessimistic person, but hip hop has been pretty ass, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of overall level. I yeah. feel like, I was Not just thinking, I, I feel like the whole Drake and Kendrick beef kind of was like a highlight in the sense where it's like, yo, these two niggas are rapping really well in all these songs. And then I was like, okay, maybe hip hop is back. And then that ended, and I was like, okay, maybe it's not because these, these, these other songs you've been putting out are not good. So. Yeah, like it just feels like it just feels like I don't want to say. Hold on, it's Kip. Oh, no, it's my manager, Kip. He got here about to go do something, but I just feel like the artist that yo, yo Kip, I'm in here. I'm talking to Eric, Eric the young guy. Yeah, yeah, man, we on the interview right now. Whoa, right. whoa, man, it's my manager, Kip. Oh, yeah, it's chilling. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. We was talking about the music. Yeah, I appreciate you for sure, man, because we need them looks. But um, to be honest, bro, I just feel like 
the 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 marketing apparatus of the genre hasn't been geared towards artists like me. Like I'm super hard to market. Like how do you market a a, a southern rapper that fucking raps over shit that sounds like Jay Dilla, but is Dungeon Family influence? And so you know, it's it's very hard to hard to put those type of artists in a box. Like Doji kind of just starting to figure it out, but you know, she's hard to put in a box. Like she yeah. she she's a She's a rapper from Tampa, Florida, that could do pop songs and walk the runway. You know, just starting to figure out how to push that. So, you know, it's just you know, it's the the most easiest thing to to explain wins. So, oh, I'm sorry, I should be like this, but the most easiest thing to explain wins, like you know, Ice Spice, no shade to her because she's cute and she makes good music. Um, but that's easy to explain. Yeah, Bronx. Fly girl, put it on the plate. Let's sell it, nigga. Like it, it, it's easy to sell. So, with hip hop being in a place where it's been around for fifty years, there's kind of not nothing new under the sun to say. So, to even push boundaries in it, you have to make something complex and layered, like a Skywater, for example. Bro, I love Skywater. He, he's he's the perfect encapsulation of that because it's like he's this british you know it's just just a lot of things about his identity is complex so it's like how do you figure out a way to package that up for the masses or do you even need to see what i'm saying so it's like i feel that's the reason why hip-hop hasn't been giving us these these classic albums and and I guess these generational artists, I think we've gotten some generational artists, you know, but it just takes time to, you know, see that through. But I definitely feel what you're saying. It's just, it, it's just very hard to sift through everything, you know, because it's like, now it feels like if I find, find something I like, it's like, I'm just so relieved. Like, it's just crazy. <laughs> it shouldn't be like that. But maybe it was always like that and we're just getting older. No, I I definitely feel you. I feel like this conversation going a million different ways, but just to preserve time, mm -hmm. I wanna I wanna ask you one more thing before we get out of here that kind of mm -hmm. builds up just being I guess you being more complex to market versus like an ice spice. One thing that I keep talking about is your voice, but you utilize it interestingly because you will sing sometimes. You do a little bit of singing, then you'll do a little bit of harmonizing. Mm -hmm. How like would you ever delve deeper into that where you're just doing it a bunch? Is that something you just want to keep at a minimum? Like, what about, you know what I'm saying? Like, like where do you see yourself and you using, like, harmonies and vocals and stuff? This next album, and it's crazy Rex, that this next album, I definitely want it to be more expansive as far as, like, how I use my voice and what even songs, hip, you know, I want to push the boundary of what even a hip-hop song sounds like. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to be venturing more into that territory, like using my voice in unique ways, straight up, flat up singing sometimes. And, you know, but just do it in a way that's tasteful and it's in service to my vision. You know, I don't want to just sing just for the sake of singing, just because I'm trying to get some more money. Like, you know, that's not, you know, that's not what I feel I'm put, put here to do. But if singing helps me convey an emotion that rapping can't, I'm going to sing. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with it, you know. I can't wait to hear that. Um, <laughs> I, can't I, wait to hear. I like I like when you sing. It's super duper. Like it's different, and I love like shit. Like we talking about Big Crit when Big Crit sing, he got like a unique singing voice. You know what I'm saying? So I like I like when people with non conventional singing voices do harmonizing and singing and stuff. Like I said, I E U I E Crit or somebody like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buddy, buddy. Well, buddy actually sounds like a damn he's classically trained singer. Sometimes when he be singing, he's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy, yeah. Wrong, buddy can so. sing. I'm not lying. Yeah, buddy. Can no, sing. not buddy. Yeah, she, buddy can sing. Shout out to so. buddy. And my guy yeah. Kent. So, um, oh but, yeah, Kent. Yeah, Kent too. Hey, bro, I, I fuck with Kent a lot. Kent, get my boy. I got a link. I got a link knows, with Kent. You know his grandfather is? No, who's his grandfather? <laughs> Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's his grandfather. Oh yeah. I yeah, I always yeah, like I always see him post like nation stuff, but I didn't know Farrakhan was his granddaddy. I didn't know that. <laughs> Nigga Farrakhan, yo, Papa, man, only man. Bro, the next time I see Ken Boy, boy, look, I, I did not know that. I bro, I didn't boy, if I knew bro, if I knew what I knew not in. <laughs> Nigga Farrakhan, your granddaddy. That's crazy. Because he had I, a picture. He posted a picture with him, his dad, and Farrakhan. 
And I was like, I was like, what's the relationship there? And he broke it down. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the relationship. Okay. Yeah, where, that's your grandfather. Yeah, that's crazy. But uh, but no, I um I appreciate you coming through. Um, definitely gotta do this some more, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely yeah. You dropping stuff. Uh, but before we get out of here, if there's any last words you gotta say to the people watching, the, the floor is yours. Um, any last words? Praise be to Allah in every situation. So yeah, I think we can end it on that. And there it is for everybody watching. Um, that's, that was a great transition from the Farrakhan to the praise be to Allah. That was, that was perfect. Hey, we go. That was a perfect ending for everybody. Yeah. Watching, I appreciate you guys. Until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate. Players gonna play. And you guys holla at your boy.